morning, everyone. Again, my name is Scott Luddy. I'm the Chief Medical Informatics Officer for Cook Children's Healthcare System. I know this is a healthcare conference, but I say the healthcare system part because if I don't, people tend to think that I work at some kind of Hansel and Gretel themed park. So I um, just want to be clear about that before I move on. In my role of CMIO, part of my job is to uh, not only identify new technologies that are going to be of value to our organization and particularly to our healthcare providers, but also to create the environment in which my teams can be successful in implementing that technology. And that means acquiring not only the financial resources and able to make the project a, a success, but also creating the culture and the environment in which people are able to adopt this new technology and really utilize it to their benefit and realize uh, some of the potential that this technology can bring forward. So I wanted to speak to you this morning a little bit about specifically how someone in my role uh, works with the organization to accomplish that and hopefully uh, some learnings for all of you who are trying to get this uh, technology adopted at your institutions as to how you might be successful. So one of the first places that we need to start is with the so-called C-suite. That's your, generally your senior leadership team. And these are the individuals who, for one thing, are going to largely control the dollars that you're going to need to make this project successful. There are also individuals who are often being bombarded by a whole series of other stakeholders in the organization who have their projects that they're bringing forward, competing for those same dollars, for the same time and energy of the organization to adopt. So they're the group that you first and foremost have to win the hearts and minds of if you're going to be successful. You really want to work with them to establish a clear vision of what RTLS is going to do for the organization. So many of these individuals are not going to be technical in their background. They're going to be clinical or business people. They probably have never heard of RTLS in their entire life. And so you're going to have to explain to them what this technology is in very simple, uh, understandable terms. And then you're going to have to paint a picture of how you can really transform the organization using this technology in ways that are exciting and, and going to get, uh, get them interested in doing this project. Project. We've seen lots of examples of that this morning from organizations that have been successful with this technology, and that paints a great picture for them and also establishes that there's precedent for success with this technology. Very important things that you need to communicate to this group. The other thing you need to do is present a believable return on investment. So as someone who sits in a C-suite, believe it or not, I don't really care how much something costs. What I care about is how much value does it return to the organization for that cost. And so you need to be able to communicate in a believable fashion that the money that you're going to invest and the time and energy you're going to invest in this project is going to bring that back greater to the organization. But you need to do so in a fairly conservative fashion, as Mark Rolt sort of indicated earlier today. You know, you're going to have, as I mentioned, a lot of other stakeholders presenting their projects. And often they're going to be kind of like a Mike Myers villain. You know, they're going to say, do my project and I will bring you one billion dollars. Um, they get used to that type of uh, audacious statement and are somewhat skeptical of it. So you want to really present a return on investment and projections that seem attainable. And then when likely, if you implement your RTLS project correctly, you exceed them, you've really earned their trust as you look at other phases of the project. So the next time you go to them and say, you want know, to save you a million dollars, they uh, begin to think, actually, he probably means five, but he's being conservative about it. So a great way to really establish uh, their belief in this system is to not overblow what you think the technology can do, but really uh, be conservative in the estimates and realistic so that you can, again, convince them as you roll the project forward. As you're beginning to plan for this, you want to tell them to, ex to really help you create a versatile sensed environment. As we've talked to some of the other folks this morning and, and heard their presentations, it's not uncommon to hear that as they've engaged their stakeholders, their customers in the organization, they've come up with 100, 200, 300 different projects and problems that they can solve with this technology. And in order to actually act on all of those opportunities, you really need an environment that can utilize different types of sensors, different types of technologies that uh, we're incorporating, like temperature sensing and other things, so that you can accomplish this wide array of goals that you uh, are ambitious to solve. So you really want to have an environment that's going to support that right from the get-go. Concurrent with that, you have to understand that this technology really uh, has a, a certain threshold by which it becomes useful. So very often when you're presenting this technology to the organization and they understandably will say, well, let's do a little pilot, maybe in the ED or one other environment, one clinic, and let's see if this is really going to uh, do all these things that you claim it will. 
often that's not going to work for you with real-time uh, location sensing because it's rather like vision. Unless you can see your entire organization, uh, it's really not going to help you a whole lot. So you have to educate them to the fact that if you're going to go in for RTLS, you really have to go in to uh, be able to sense a uh, significant, if not the entire size of the organization in order to make it valuable. And then lastly, you want to purchase a software platform that really is going to accommodate some of this versatility, the scalability that you're going to need within the organization. And uh, so you want a company that is not wed to one particular sensing technology or uh, is very proprietary in nature. You want someone that can play nice with all the other vendors and new technologies that are evolving in this space. Uh, and so that's going to be an important consideration as you move forward also. Lastly, this is something that surprises a lot of, uh, of uh, C-suites as they begin to think about this project, and that is that you're going to need to create an RTLS team. Very often there's a desire to think that, you know, I can just make my materials management guy do this a couple hours a week and he'll get some help from uh, the person in inventory, et cetera, et cetera. This is really not going to uh, set you up to be successful with one of these platforms. Uh, you need to really have a dedicated team that can put the time and energy into rolling out this technology, making certain that it's uh, supported properly and is continually maintained in a fashion that proves it to be reliable to the organization, or you're going to have some real challenges in moving the technology forward. Uh, rolling out RTLS is a really interesting lesson. You know, one of the things I didn't appreciate before I w started working with this technology was how often we simply did things like moved walls in the organization. Um, so you'll not uh, realize that your ED is suddenly redesigning an entire area and they've torn down all their walls and redone their rooms. And unless you have a team that's kind of out there and looking at these things, they're not going to realign the sensors and things in the technology to make that useful. So you, again, you need this dedicated staff that's going to be able to support this technology to set it up for success. Once you have the C-suite on board, you want to begin to plan your project in a way that's going to guarantee you continue that success and, and start with success. So one of the things that I suggest you uh, consider is to look at asset management as a great place to start. That being, of course, tagging inventory items and high value items to the organization so that they can be found and tracked to either reduce the number of them that you need in the organization and manage them more effectively, or to allow your uh, clinical staff to be able to find them when they urgently need them and reduce the wear and tear on those individuals as they go through their very busy days. So asset management has a number of advantages in this regard. It also provides a very high return on investment. So when you're trying to convince the C-suite that you're honest in your estimates of how this is going to bring value back to the organization, asset management is a great way to reduce the number of things you need to buy, to improve the value out of the things that you get right now, to not lose that multi-million dollar batch of uh, flu vaccines that you had, and other things that are really going to uh, prove to be a value to the organization. So it's really going to be an easy win here to get that in return on investment. You need to prove the value of the project. One other nice really thing about asset management is you're tagging stuff, not people. And so one of the challenges that many RTLS implementers will face is the big brother effect. You know, I don't want the organization to know where I am and what I'm doing at any point in time because they're going to use this information in some way that's not good for me. And one of the ways to get around that concern at the offset is to really start with tagging things that no one really cares about that they're known except in a good way. And so when you're tagging stuff instead of people, you really avoid this big concern. And as people see the technology used in beneficial ways for the organization, very often the light goes on for them to say, hey, you know what, actually it's going to be a really good thing if my coworkers know where I am at this point in time, or I know when my patients are in this particular area so that I can go do my procedure and things of that nature. So one of the ways to get comfort around this technology is to really start with a way that doesn't intimidate the staff and uh, raise these concerns for them. The other nice thing about asset management is it delivers value to a very wide array of stakeholders. So not only is this useful technology for the biomed folks who are managing all the inventory in your facilities, it's of great value to the nurses who are trying to find that particular handheld ultrasound machine they need for the code that's going on in this particular room or they're just trying to find a wheelchair so they can get this patient discharged in a timely fashion. There's a lot of different people in your organization that are going to find benefit from knowing where things are in real time, and so you can make a lot of people happy with this as a first step, and really a great way to, again, start with success with this system. 
once you're going in your project, you want to make certain that you've created an environment that's going to sustain this in a way that uh, provides trust in the reliability and value of this system. So one of the ways in which you do that is to establish governments around with both your clinical and your operational stakeholders. As I alluded to and as we've heard from other folks today, you're going to find that once this technology is in place, there's going to be all kinds of folks in your organization who are going to have great ideas about how they can use this to solve problems that they face. And you're going to need some means of governance to, to determine how you're going to roll these things out, which things are of actual value to your particular organization, and how you're going to manage this system in the long term. So when you have a governance board that's made out of both your clinical and operational stakeholders, they can help you determine which are the projects that are really going to be priorities for us based on the value to the largest number of stakeholders. What are going to be our rollout plans? Is this going to uh, coincide well with the uh, redesign they're doing of the ED this month? Is this going to uh, be something we can educate our nurses on in time um, so that it coincides with our go live? And what is our model for support? Is our help desk and service desk folks going to know if they get a call that uh, one of the sensors is down in our room, what to do with that and who they're going to talk to? So they can really help you get a lot of those pieces in place that are going to be necessary to make your rollout successful and to maintain it in the long term. The other thing you want to do to create sustainability is you really need to demonstrate the value that you alluded to when you brought the project live. You want to do some pre and post measurements. So you want to show to your operational stakeholders that all those dollars you saved, well, here's how much we spent before we had RTLS, and here's how much we saved after we had it. We want to show that with our nursing staff, you know, you used to spend this many hours trying to find your wheelchairs, your pumps, all these bits of equipment, and now that's down to this amount when we do a couple of time and motion studies on the floor. You want to demonstrate to your uh, uh, stakeholders that this is value, uh, valuable technology. And you really want to educate not only the fans of the technology, they're an easy win, but they need to have that their belief in the system is confirmed. But you want to go to the folks that were really skeptical about this and demonstrate the value as well so that you can begin to win them over. And so those people that really felt concerned that you were going to do big brother things and other things, you can say, actually, you know what? What we really did is save our staff a whole bunch of time and looking for things that were hard to find or other things that are valuable to them. Of course, with any technology project, the easy part is generally the technology itself. Uh, if you've got enough smart people and enough time, you can figure out how to get the software talking to the widgets and where the widgets should go and all those kinds of details. That part will typically come together. The real challenge you're going to have is really the change management process, getting the people in your organization to embrace this technology and use it to its maximum potential. And that's going to take significant focus and work to be successful in that effort. You're going to need to really educate your staff on the role of RTLS. So not only your C-suite and your leadership, but you're going to have to go to the ground level individuals in your organization and say, hey, we're bringing in this new technology that lets you find stuff in real time. And here's why it's going to be a benefit to you. And here's some of the things that are going to help you with it. And here's some of the things you're worried about that we're probably not going to do with that technology. So you really make, uh, need to educate them and get them to understand what it is you're bringing to the organization and what your intentions are with it. Typically, as I mentioned, you want to track things first and people second, just again, so that you avoid any of those big brother concerns and get people used to the notion of how knowing where things are in real time is going to help me before they begin to look at how that's going to change their interactions with their patients and their staff and their coworkers directly. You want to make certain that you're avoiding punitive uh, use cases. So when I first brought uh, uh, RTLS technology to a prior organization I was working with, they had a particular problem in staffing they'd noticed, and that was that they had a lot of uh, parents who worked at the organization, and they'd learned a little trick that um, we were clocking them in when they actually parked their car, so when they would come into the parquet, they would uh, badge in, and that would be the time that they were shown as have started uh, working at the organization. And uh, when they badged out at, at uh, evening, that would be when they would end. Well, these people would actually go in and quickly badge in, but not actually park their car. They didn't go and drop their kid off at school and come in a little later. So HR was really in a tizzy about the folks that were doing this. And as we began to look at RTLS deployment, they said, great, this is how we're going to catch these guys and we're going to solve this problem. And one of the things I had to do as the champion for this software was say, eh, time out, no, we're not going to do that because all we're going to do is establish that this is used to hurt people, not help them, and that's going to kill the implementation right when it starts. 
So you really have to work with the organization to understand how you derive benefit from this and make certain that it's not done in a way to, uh, to really negatively impact people. And then lastly, you need to really publicize your benefits and your wins. So as people are beginning to adopt this technology and question whether it's something that's really going to be helpful for them, whether it's worth the effort to go to training, whether they should bring their new initiatives to your governance board, you really want to publicize those cases where the technology has really helped the organization. Again, where you saved that big lot of uh, flu vaccines, where there was the uh, individual in the emergency room that was being threatened by a patient and could push their duress button and have security go directly where they were real time to help them. Uh, how you save the organization from buying 90% too many wheelchairs because they just didn't know where they were before and they were able to do that very quickly. So as you publicize your benefits and your wins, you're going to be able to really establish for not only your executives but also those people that are going to be using the technology that you've really introduced something of value. Lastly, you want to establish a really rigorous support process. So the only way that this technology succeeds is if it's reliable. So as you're beginning to roll it out and as you continue to roll out this project, you need to be certain that you've got your support staff thoroughly trained, that you've got a process for how you're going to replace your batteries and make certain that the system is always uh, on and always working, how you're going to accommodate your construction projects and make certain that you're moving your walls and sensors around in a way that makes sense, how you're tagging your new inventory items so that you can reliably find the stuff that's coming into the organization. You need to really work on those additional processes that are going to help this technology be sustainable in the long run. With that, I thank you.